Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking this brushless 65mm whoop that I made a few videos ago, and we're going to be giving it a lighter frame and a new receiver. So on the original design here, as you can see, all the plastic parts are very thick, so the ducts have very thick walls, these braces are very thick, and there's just a lot of wasted material here because these have a lot of just rough material, and having these two supports here just made the quad weaker because there was more points for it to break. And overall, th this frame was a pretty good start, but I definitely had some ideas to upgrade it. And also this canopy is pretty heavy since it's just basically a solid wall. And so what I did to fix all these problems is I designed a new frame. And so this frame right here has a new canopy and this canopy has a lot of holes in it to help with airflow to cool the quad since it gets pretty hot in the core. And then also it's a lot lighter. The old canopy was about four grams and this is about 1.75 grams, so a lot lighter. And then we have the new frame right here. As you can see, the walls are very thin now. And then instead of doing two supports per motor post, I just went with one thick one that goes straight up to the duct. And this way we get more strength, but also there's more airflow now per duct, so it should be more efficient that way. And additionally, I moved the motors down one millimeter because on the original design, I'm pretty sure that because the motors are sitting so high up, the propellers are probably just pushing air outside the ducts with the curved part of the design. And so it's not actually sucking all the air down. So that also might cause some flight time decreases and just overall inefficiency. So I'm hoping that with the motor sitting a little bit lower that they'll suck more air in and then it'll be able to push more air through these bigger holes. And then with the overall lighter setup, it should be a lot more efficient. We should get more flight time and more power. This frame is four grams and the old one is about six and a half. So we definitely saved a lot of weight there too. So with all these design changes, I'm going to now do a time lapse of taking the components off of this frame and moving them onto this frame. And then once I'm done, we can do some flight time and power tests with the new frame. And then before I had this FHSS receiver on board the micro quad and the problem with this is that it has two long full size antennas and it's just very beefy for a micro quad but it was the only one that I had that had the proper connector. So I'm keeping this receiver in this quad and what I ended up doing is I got this FR Pro receiver which is a DAFR Sky receiver and as you can see it only has one antenna and it is small 12 by 17 millimeters. Of course, it's D8, so I can use my Radio Master TX12, which will also allow me to use high precision gimbals. So this should overall be a lighter setup and a more enjoyable setup to fly on a nice transmitter. I'm going to do a time lapse of taking the components off of this old frame, and then we can do some flight time and power tests of the new setup. Whoa. Alright, so here's the quad fully put together. I have the receiver sticking out here, but I'm gonna push it back in once I bind the receiver. So this drone is pretty cool, but it does weigh quite a bit for its size. So as you can see, this is 28 grams and the receiver isn't even in it right now, which weighs an extra two grams and then the battery weighs nine grams. And we're coming in at 26 grams, which is two grams lighter than it was before. And that's with the receiver though. Without the receiver, it was 28 grams originally and with the receiver before it was about 30 grams and now it's 26 with the receiver so that's four grams lighter than it was originally so we're four grams lighter and we should have more efficiency with airflow so hopefully that ends up working out so i have my radio master tx12 right here so i'm going to turn it on welcome to 
to open TX. And we're gonna set up a model. So I have the name right here for the model set up as 65 Alien because I'm calling this the Alien Quad. And then down here, I'm gonna switch the type, which is the protocol, to FR Sky X right here. And then under subtype, we're gonna put D8. And that should be it. Now we're gonna bind the quad. So what I'm gonna do is hold this bind button right here on the receiver, and then plug in the quad. And as you can see, it lights up, so it's working. And I'm going to try to bind it now. The receiver just turned off, so I think that that means that it's bound and the binding stopped. So now it's flashing. If you can see that right there, it's flashing on and off. So I think that means we're bound. So I'm really quickly gonna set up my mode switches in Betaflight so that I can actually arm it with the switches. So in Betaflight here, I'm going to go to configuration and scroll down and I need to select serial base, which it's already serial based, and S bus. So we should be good there. And so my sticks move on the screen, which is perfect. So I just got my arming switch working. So that's this switch right here. And so when I flick it, channel five goes up, which is aux one. And so what I had to do to get that to work is in inputs right here, I had to actually create a switch for channel five. And then in the next menu, which is mixes, I had to actually tell it that when the switch is down to activate the switch. So right now it's not activated because the hundred's not bold. And then when I flick the switch, it's bold as you can see. So that means it's activated or in the down position. So I can use that for arming. So that's basically how I set up my auxiliary switches in Betaflight with an OpenTX transmitter. I'm sure there's more in-depth tutorials online if you want to look more into that, but I'm going to do that for the auxiliary 2 and auxiliary 3 so that I can set up flight modes and turtle modes so that I can flip over if I crash. The quad right here is plugged in, but as you can see, when I tilt forward, it's actually going backward, and when I tilt backward, it's going forward, but left and right is correct. So what you have to do, go to the configuration tab right here, and then under board and sensor alignment, so if you think about it, if you flip the board 180 degrees along the same plane, it will just invert the pitch, but the rotation on the roll axis will still stay the same. So as you see now, back is back, front is front, left, right are all correct. So this thing should be ready to fly. So I'm just going to do a quick test hover and then we can take it out for a maiden flight and see how much more flight time and power we have on this new lightweight setup. All right, so we have the drone plugged in right there. So we're going to do a little test hover. So now that we have this new lightweight setup working, I guess the next thing to do is to take this out for a little test flight to see if we got any more flight time and some improved punch on the throttle. All right, so the quad is ready to go, so I'm gonna plug it in here. And there's our video feed. So real quick, I am using my Eosheen EV800DM FPV goggles right here. And then right here is my Radio Master TX12 which we're obviously using with FR Sky now. And there is the FPV feed. So we're gonna go fly. Welcome to Open TX. All right, so I'm going to arm the quad and fly around and we're gonna see if we have more power and more flight time. There we go. All right, here we go. Oh, so there's a lot of power now. I can actually like kind of punch out a little bit here, as you can see. So that's cool. So yeah, definitely a lot more control, a lot more power. I'm trying to orbit myself here. And yeah. Alright, let's try flying around the house here. So there's definitely a lot more power. I can actually recover when I'm falling and I actually have some punching power, as you can see. Before it took me like 10 seconds just to climb, I would go full throttle and climb up the stairs like this. But now I can just go up like that, so it's so much faster. 
I'm already getting a low battery warning, but that's just because there's some voltage sag. So we're halfway through the flight time that I would normally get. Still a pretty good voltage. I'm just going to cruise around here. So definitely already improved in terms of power. It feels so much better to just fly around. It's actually more fun because you can control it a lot better. So that's cool. And right here we're approaching our old flight time, so we're at 2 minutes, but the quad still has plenty of power, so I could probably keep flying for a minute at least. So yeah, it seems like the power and the flight time is going to be increased on this new setup. This setup is 5.5 grams lighter, just about, than the previous setup, so it makes sense that it's so much more efficient. And it does just feel a lot lighter when you're moving around. A lot more controllable. A lot more afro -faithful. And as you can see, even though we're on lower throttle, I can still climb up perfectly. Which is definitely something that wasn't possible before. Still have perf perfectly good climbing capabilities. Which is what you want in a quad, even when it has low battery, you can still climb at a decent rate to recover. So we're at about 3 volts. Obviously there's some voltage stacks, so I can keep flying for a little bit. Because when I disarm the quad, it's going to be above 3 volts. So I'll fly it down probably 2.8ish. There are some near oscillations right there, as you can see. It's probably just because the propeller is slightly rubbing against the duct, but that will wear away over time. So not a major issue. So I'm going to see if I can just get like 4 minutes from cruising, that means we'll get double the flight time overall. So yeah, we do have some oscillations. Alright, so right here, I'm full throttle and it, the quad's just dying. The voltage is just too low to fly. Um, as you can see, it did recover to 3.17 volts. So let me see if I can fly it up to myself here. Oh, alright, I crashed. So we basically got like one and a half minutes extra flight time and as you can see the footage just cut out right there so the quad basically just went into like a, a battery safe mode so that it doesn't accidentally go under three volts so yeah overall i'm really happy about the results uh, we were able to get basically double the flight time and we had so much more power and control over the entire uh, throttle range so that was really cool the quad just felt really light and maneuverable so that was also a really awesome aspect of this new setup I'm glad I tackled this new design because it ended up working out really well. So now that this Whoop performs as basically any other brushless Whoop would indoors, I might look into racing with it indoors and setting up my own courses, so there might be some videos on that just kind of racing around for fun. It's also awesome that I was able to get the FR Sky receiver working in there with my Radio Master TX-12. That definitely improved the overall experience as well since I had nice precision on the gimbals. And overall, this setup was definitely just a lot more enjoyable to fly than how I had it before. So like I said, I'll probably come out with some racing course videos in the future. And yeah, so thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.